this is number two of three tutorials on coding line art in Photoshop and specifically coloring storyboard art. And by storyboard art I just simply mean you gotta move fast. A matter of hours and not days on this and that's why I'm going to be focusing on some keyboard shortcuts in order to get this done. Alright, revisiting the layers. Line art is on top as mentioned in the last tutorial and in each one of these little pieces have been broken out and each color piece has had the transparency or the pixels locked on it. With that, time to dive in. Oh, one tiny thing. The brush tool is selected. And let me just scoot off of that so that rollover goes away. With the brush tool selected, you can actually take and tap just any one of the digits, like 3, 2, 1, and you can see the opacity changing. So 5 or 5-5 five, five or 2-2. Two, 20% two. tends to be my favorite when working like this. So. I'm going to jump onto the layer that's called hair, tap B for brush, option to grab that primary color, and then I'm going to scoot the black way down in that. And then I'm going to begin stroking out. Keep in mind that this is set to 20% and here's why. It's building. Each time I do a stroke over another, it kind of does a little bit of this, which is sort of interesting. Helps the hair along. Now for the most convincing hair strands or hair grouping, just travel along the path of the hair as you've either drawn it or that you can imagine that the person or creature might have actually combed it or the direction that it grows. That's what I'm doing here. Now, there was just a little bit of thought that went into this. The light source is going to be what I call 2 o'clock or a deep 2 o'clock and then this device is going to be giving a little bit of light off. It's going to be blue so there'll be some highlights in here later on but right now with it set to 20% and a near black or very very dark chocolate color I'm just kind of going through the hair and for the sake of the tutorial I'm gonna call this done if you make a mistake just hold on the option key grab that base hair color and then work that back into that and you can see how it acts like it's kind of a softener now I'm gonna highlight her hair right along in here so I'm gonna kinda open this up for myself alright I don't want it Spend too much time, I'll just grab black hair and go in. Tap 1 for 10% because that was too aggressive. Travel up, and then for the sake of this, I'll call this quits. B for brush, option primary color, highlights, bump this up, 2 for 20%, and then I'll go in and just tap where I want to put highlights in just a moment. Or if you can imagine that someone with hair like this might have a little bit of copper strands buried in there. So there we go, and that's going to be good. Now, over on the palette over here, tap R. That brings up that tool. If you hold down Shift, that helps you toggle through these. So while holding down Shift and R, you can see how that tool is going between the Blur tool, the Sharpen tool, and the Smudge tool. Smudge is where I'm going to stay at. The setting is 50% strength and I'm going to use the bracket key to increase the brush size and this is another example of moving in the direction the strands are so the smudge tool is just going to take and blend those in. Try to avoid the skin if you happen to have it all on the same layer because it'll just blur that right in there but here you go and that is going to be quits for that all done. Now another cheat Tap O, that'll bring up the burn and dodge. And if I tap Shift and O together, you can cycle through those tools. That is going to be the dodge tool. So with the dodge tool activated and at 10% exposure with protective tones and a highlight, I'm going to target some of these areas and increase the brush size way up there. And this kind of stroke like right around in there and right around in there. And it just essentially helps things pop like that. If you want to hold down Shift and O, you can bring up the Burn tool and you can kind of do the same effect within there. Okay, that's done. Go to the skin layer. B for brush, grab that base color, and then I'm going to darken it way down. And I'm still at 20% and I'm just going to kind of go like this. All the areas where there might be shadows, of course, just give them a little bit of a tap. That hair strand might do that. Whoops, that was kind of sloppy. And then the glasses kind of come across there, so maybe she might have that. 
and then because it's a 20% now I can build I can just keep using the same brush and the same style to kind of make some of these shadowed areas deeper and then go up here and then this now right around in here I kind of treat that like makeup it looks really rough at first R for the smudge tool and just give it a little bit of a rub like that and then there you go I can tap G to bring up the gradient tool and this is probably one of my favorite tools for any kind of work like this for subtlety and shading is set the foreground if I can back out and see that let's bring that over here this is really a nice preset it's essentially the foreground color to transparent with that ready to go and you set it to radial I can go down here B for brush grab the skin tone add a little bit of red to it G for the gradient and it's set to radial and I can go like that and I can add this kind of interesting red tone to the characters um, nose and chin which kind of helps them feel a little bit more alive so back to the skin B for brush tap that increase the highlight increase the brush one for ten percent and kind of give a little bit of touch a little bit of a touch here if I want to give her a little bit of lipstick or something like that I do B for brush hit the skin tone punch a little bit of red into it twenty percent bracket down the brush and then just paint in the lips nice and subtle if I want to make the upper lip a little bit darker go like that add that in and to take some of it out option grab the skin tone go back in and give a little bit of rub and then you can make it subtle O for the dodge tool pulse these areas with a little bit of the dodging and that might be set to 20%. I'll bump it up a little bit more. This tool can be really aggressive, but I'll go with that. I don't like how that turned out. Looks like it uh, looks like almost like a bruise. So G for the gradient tool. Go in here, 30% gradient tool, and I can just pulse and repair that just like that. Same thing with down here, and same thing down here. Over to the hands. Time to move quick. Grab that tone darken 20% hit it in there and then just go right down there here's the band go right around that hit it again other part of the hand there there select it highlight hit this area like that be a highlight there highlight there I'm totally guessing right about now oh for the dodge tool I'm going to turn off protective tone to see what it does. It's going, to, it's going to give me a little bit of gold to it, which would be fine for now. There. Now for the shirt, tap, B for brush. And I'm going to grab this shirt value. It looks like my tool is acting just a little bit strange for me. Why would it be doing that? B for brush, darken it, increase the brush size way up, and then with that darker tone, just kind of stroke right in there and then stroke back out. And then stroke in, stroke out. G for gradient, darken it even more and kind of give it a subtle vignetting right over here. And now for the iPad, I'm going to focus on the hardware around this first. It's actually a darker device, so B for brush, select that option delete darken it up add a little bit more gray to it 20% brush tool and then do strokes across this is just kind of the classic shine to the device and then I'm gonna hit G for gradient and I'm gonna accent that just a little bit more with a lighter tone lighter tone here and a lighter tone right in there O for the dodge bring that up and then decrease the dodge tool down and help accentuate some of those shines by stroking across like that. If this effect looks too strong to you when you're doing this, you can simply make sure you're on that layer. Gaussian blur. Pulse the Gaussian blur. Kind of a low. I'm going to go 2.4 on this. That's 2.4. 
Now for the screen. The screen I don't care about because I'm going to be provided with a UI by another designer. But I am going to place something in there just for the sake of um, putting a graphic in there. I have a graphic that's ready. It was just a screen capture off of my pad. Um, just, again, I'm not caring about content. I want to give them something to think about. So, best thing to do, hold down the command key. Select the screen. This is the part that's been colored. And with that screen selected, go Shift, Option, Command V. It'll automatically make a mask and place it right into there. And here's what I mean by that. There's that mask that was placed. So, of course, I'm going to name my layer. I'm going to go iPad Screen. It's in. Select the layer that has this graphic on it. Command T brings up the transform tool holding down the command key will let you do a free transform so that's just a command T and then holding down the command key again let you place this I'm not again too concerned about this look it's going to be replaced but I'm just kind of giving something to look at hit OK that's too detailed even though it's just FPO which means um, for position only so what I'd like to do too hit the filter gallery, paint dabs, and then there we go. Just kind of simplify, you can use watercolor, just um, select any filter that kind of uh, gets your attention and have that effect on it. Now what I'm going to do is move this layer, which is the coloring back up. Its pixels are locked. I'm going to give it a blue tone. I want kind of a deeper blue. I'm going to experiment with the layer modes. I'm going to lower it right down to soft light. I'll play with overlay for a second, but I happen to like soft light. Another one is my favorite is multiply. Multiply at around 50%. Doesn't look too bad. And then I'm going to make another layer. I'm going to call it shine. Hold down the option key. Select the space. B for brush. Sample the background color for white. And just make strokes right across there. That's at 20%, but I want to go full, so let's get 0 for 100%. And I'm going to do some strokes right across there, just like that. Lower my brush size. Do that. And then, what I like to do is motion blur. There's the motion blur. Lower that down. The opacity is down to 50%. And if that's a little bit too heavy-handed, you can hit right down at the bottom palette. I know the CS6 will change this, but this is classic CS5 interfaces. Layer mask. Add a layer mask to that one. And once you do, you can select the layer mask, tap G, make sure your foreground color is set to black, 100% on this tool. And with that layer, black, and our gradient trick, you can tap these areas and you can reduce its appearance. So there you go. That's basic color work on that. And what I'll do before I proceed to the next part, kind of between tutorials if there's such a thing, I'm going to add blue right here to her glasses. So that's that. Mm -hmm.